I don't think anybody hits a high heater better than Swarm Stubbs. He has become one of the most prolific home run hitters in the game. Fly ball, right center field, going back is Gonzalez. It is good! In 2022, Kyle Schwarber led the National League with 46 home runs, but this was just in the regular season. In his 17 postseason games, he hit an additional six home runs in the NLCS and World Series. And it is a breaking ball. Schwarber was ready. How far does this go? Second deck. This 488-foot home run was not only the longest home run in Petco Park history, it's the hardest hit postseason home run in the StatCast era. Schwarber has built his career off his immense power, leading to an incredible, yet odd, 2022 season. In the past decade, a 46-plus home run season has occurred 15 times. However, Schwarber's OPS ranks at the bottom of this list. I mean, someone has to be at the bottom of this list, but why Schwarber? Well, answer this question. How many players in MLB history have hit at least 45 home runs with an OPS of 830 or lower? Take a guess. The answer? One player. Kyle Schwarber. To put this into perspective, Schwarber and Shohei Otani have both hit 46 home run seasons, but the difference in OPS is staggering. In short, Schwarber's 2022 season was one of the most uniquely weird seasons in recent history. But after taking a closer look at his career, it's not too surprising to see a season like this. As a prospect with the Cubs, Schwarber's immense power was projected to be game-changing. Although questions about his defensive ability and quote-unquote sluggish speed limited his value to being an offense-first player who's better suited as a DH. He was primarily slotted as a left fielder for the Cubs, and he went on to showcase what scouts projected he'd become. Between 2017 and 2020, Schwarber was one of only 27 players to hit at least 100 home runs. However, he was dead last in OPS Plus and B-War, and second to last in Average and OPS. He had a similar play style to Joey Gallo as they both drew a lot of walks and hit plenty of home runs, but they weren't hitting many singles or doubles. Although, there's a key difference between these two their defensive abilities. Gallo is considered an above average outfield defender, while Schwarber is among the worst in the league. In particular, in 2020, these two were in the bottom three in batting average among qualified hitters. But because of Gallo's defense, he was a much more valuable player. Also, Schwarber's poor 2020 season resulted in a release by the Cubs. Although, this ended up changing his career for the better. After signing a one-year deal with the Nationals for the 2021 season, Schwarber turned into an offensive phenom. Specifically, in an 18-game period in mid-June, he hit 16 home runs with a slugging percentage over 1,000. Only two other players have hit at least 16 home runs in an 18-game span. Barry Bonds, and Sammy Sosa. Unfortunately, Schwarber got injured not too long after this streak, but he became a sought-after trade target, joining the Red Sox as a result. Interestingly, his home run to fly ball ratio went down significantly for the first time in his career. But if anything, he became a more complete offensive player. More doubles, a lower strikeout rate, and a Soto-esque walk rate turned Schwarber into one of the league's best hitters. Granted, his BABIP was incredibly high, High, likely in part due to Fenway Park being a very hitter-friendly environment. Still, he had shown legitimate improvement in his quality of contact, which earned him a four-year deal from the Phillies. In just the first half, he hit 29 home runs, which not only led the National League, it was the second most home runs ever hit by a Philly in the first half of a season. In fact, it was quite similar to Ryan Howard's 2008 first half. But there was one key difference. You see the huge gap in RBIs? Well, this wasn't because Howard played on a better team. Both the 2008 and 2022 Phillies made the World Series. It's because Howard was the cleanup hitter of his team, while Schwarber was primarily a leadoff hitter. Imagine going back to 2008 and telling manager Charlie Manuel that Ryan Howard should be a leadoff hitter. He'd call you insane. 
In the end, these two had similar seasons, and Schwarber's performances were crucial in the Phillies' journey to the playoffs. Notably, his multi-homer games against the Nationals and Astros during that final push for a wildcard spot. Now, this wasn't Schwarber's first time as a leadoff hitter. Back with the Cubs, manager Joe Madden experimented with Schwarber as the leadoff man due to his ability to get on base. Also, considering his historic 16-home run streak in 2021 occurred during his limited tenure as a leadoff hitter, it makes sense why the Phillies gave him a shot to lead off in response to his early season struggles. Still, despite the success, it's odd to see Schwarber in this position. Why is that? Well, the leadoff spot has evolved immensely over the years. Between the years of 1992, 2002, 2012, and 2022, the frequency of home runs by leadoff hitters has gone up, while stolen bases have drastically gone down. In the past, leadoff hitters were typically middle infielders or outfielders who could steal bases and hit for average, but didn't have much power. Only guys like Ricky Henderson, Bobby Bonds, Craig Biggio, and Alfonso Soriano, among a few others, could steal a bunch of bases and still possess the power to consistently hit doubles and home runs. However, as stolen bases have fallen out of favor due to sabermetrics, on-base percentage and power has reigned supreme. So the evolution of the leadoff hitter is just a symptom of the the evolution of baseball, as players who run well usually hit for less power, while players who reach base well usually hit for more power. To illustrate this, let's use the same four years as before, and look at hitters who led off in at least 100 games in their respective season. As you can see, the number of 20 double, 20 home run seasons has steadily gone up, while the rate of 20 stolen base seasons has drastically gone down. You may think that Schwarber is among the four players with a 20 double, 20 home run season, but surprisingly, he isn't. He hit 21 doubles in total, but only 17 of them were in the leadoff spot. Just looking at his leadoff stats and full season stats side by side, you really get a sense of how uniquely odd this season was. He didn't showcase the speed of the traditional leadoff hitter, nor the on-base percentage of a modern hitter. As for his 38 home runs, this isn't normal for a leadoff hitter either. In MLB history, only three players have hit at least 38 home runs from the leadoff spot in a single season, Alfonso Soriano, George Springer, and Kyle Schwarber. However, Soriano and Springer are very different from Schwarber. Soriano was an extra base hit machine who could steal over 30 bases per season. Springer is more of an all-around type of hitter who can hit for average or power and get on base while possessing a manageable strikeout rate. As for Schwarber, he fits a much different archetype, the three true outcome hitter. He hits lots of home runs, draws plenty of walks, but strikes out a ton too. Also, in the process of swinging for the fences, he neglects singles and doubles, which is why his batting average and on-base percentage is so low. Since 1901, among players to lead off in at least 100 games, only four players have produced less than a 220 average and 320 on-base percentage in the same season. To be fair, a 320 on-base percentage on its own isn't bad, especially when your OPS is top three among leadoff hitters. But it's also fair to question whether Schwarber is better suited elsewhere in the lineup. Given how much of his value comes from home runs, this may be an inefficient allocation of power, as it's likely a home run out of the leadoff spot will be a solo home run. However, at the same time, lineup optimization may matter less than you think. According to the authors of the book, Playing the Percentages in Baseball, the difference between a perfect lineup and a typically constructed lineup, regardless of its philosophical underpinnings, is worth only about 10 to 15 runs over a full season. But but don't equate something that barely matters to not mattering at all. Something as small as an extra two or three wins due to gaining a small edge in certain situations can be very important in the long run. For example, Schwarber's leadoff home runs in the final few regular season games were crucial in securing the final wildcard spot. After the leadoff home run against the Nationals on September 30th, Noah Syndergaard said it was a pivotal moment that got the team back on the right track. With all of this in mind, I think we can all agree, Schwarber's 2022 season was historically unusual for a leadoff hitter. Although, it's also worth pointing out, it was historically unusual for a power hitter as well. Schwarber ranked among the best 
best in home runs and walk rate, but everything else ranges from above average to straight up bad. His slash line illustrates this perfectly. A terrible batting average, a decent on base percentage, and a borderline elite slugging percentage, which equates to an above average OPS and WRC+. But here's the thing. This isn't normal for 40 plus home run hitters. In MLB history, only eight players have had a 40 plus home run season with an OPS of 830 or less. What's even more rare is the combination of 40 home runs and 200 strikeouts. Interestingly, these seven individual seasons all rank top 50 in three true outcome percentage since the integration era began in 1947. Meaning all of these players at bats ended in a strikeout, walk, or home run more often than not. Three true outcome percentage has has risen significantly over the past decade, but the league hopes this can be curtailed with the banning of the shift, although there's skepticism on whether this will be the outcome. At the AA level in 2021, the same shift restrictions that will be added in 2023 were added here. In spite of these changes, the league-wide BABIP didn't change much at all. Then in 2022, these rules were added to low A and high A. And again, there wasn't much change. According to AA manager Kevin Randall, nothing really changed. I didn't see any advantages or disadvantages to it at all. In the end, it all kind of evened out. You steal some outs and you give up some cheap hits. I think it was pretty much all the same. It's important to note that shifts are less common in the minor leagues than in the majors. But overall, we likely won't be seeing any drastic changes to hitting in 2023. Except there is one group of hitters that should benefit, left-handed pull hitters, which is exactly what Kyle Schwarber is. In 2022, he was one of only 12 players with at least a 90% shift rate in at least 200 plate appearances. Couple this with the fact Schwarber is in the upper echelon of exit velocity and barrel rate, and it's reasonable to believe his average should increase. But realistically, how many more hits will he actually get? He already possesses some of the lowest ground ball and line drive rates in the league. Also, his drastic increase in pop-up rate tells me he attempted to lift the ball more than ever in 2022, resulting in more home runs, but less of everything else. To be fair, this could have been the result of having one of the league's highest shift rates, but realistically, Schwarber isn't going to stop using the home run power that earned him an $80 million contract. But perhaps he finds some sort of middle ground and lowers his launch angle to 2021 levels. We'll just have to wait and see. Now, here's a fun question. Will Schwarber remain as a leadoff hitter in 2023? Well, as of February 18th, manager Rob Thompson plans to use new signing Trey Turner as the leadoff hitter and place Schwarber right behind him. I believe this makes the most sense for everyone involved, but it makes me wonder if we'll ever see a Schwarber-esque leadoff season ever again. It can't be understated how uniquely odd this season was, and with further changes likely coming in the near future to influence league offense, it may become extremely difficult to replicate a season of this nature. Regardless, Schwarber should continue to bring value to the Phillies with his abundance of home runs, clutch moments, and leadership role in the locker room. The addition of Bryce Harper later in the season will be a huge boost to this lineup, and as long as Schwarber keeps producing the way he has, the Phillies have a great chance at getting back into the postseason. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Leave a like if you did, and subscribe for more content just like this. Thanks for watching.